Hey boys, how's it going? Hey, we're coming to an end, hopefully, of all this craziness. Um, guess what? Sunday is, we're opening church, Sunday the 31st. So, man, it's going to be great. I hope to see some of you guys there. And, uh, hey, we're starting. So here we go, and I can't wait till we do Rangers very soon, okay? Uh, Do you guys notice something different about me? Uh, it's not the hair. Uh, still no hair, okay? But yeah, I did grow it out a little bit right here. Wherever I can grow it out, I'll grow it out. So I grow out a little goatee, but uh, I kind of said to myself, you know what, I'm going to let it grow until we go back to church. So hopefully by Sunday, uh, May 31st, you'll see me clean shaven. I won't have this. So hopefully we'll be there. I want to get into a little uh, scripture verse, and it's found in Ecclesiastes 4, uh, chapter 4, verses 9 through 12. And it says, Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to, to help him up. Again, if two lie down together, they'll keep warm. Uh, but how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him. And threefold, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. And to illustrate that, I have sticks here today. I have this stick that I found in my yard. Okay, And if we just look at the stick, it's, it's real skinny. And if you put pressure, it breaks. Okay. But if we look at these pencils, okay, one, of course, is going to break. Two, it's a little tougher. And the Bible says threefold is better. Okay, So if we try to break these three that are together, it's really hard. Yeah, you can hear it crack a little bit, but they hold together. And, you know, during these times, we've been, we really maybe haven't been seeing each other or talking to each other. But you know what? I want to encourage you guys. Look for your friends. Encourage one another. Talk to them. See what's going on in their lives. Yeah, I know most of the time we either talk to each other or we mess around. Okay, But I want to encourage you guys. Look deeper. Ask them tougher questions. How you been? What's going on in the family? Is everything okay with you? Okay, The commanders and I have been keeping track of each other. We we text and we talk. and uh, I, I appreciate that because... Hey, I need someone to talk to too, okay? But God has put this scripture verse there for a reason. And he wants to let you know that during this time, it's not good to be alone, okay? Commanders are here for you. Be there for each other. All right, I want to get into the last part of the code that we've been going over. And it's obedient and spiritual. Do you guys know, do you guys remember what obedient is? Do you guys know what the meaning is? Obedient, he obeys his parents, leaders, and those in authority. And spiritual, he prays, reads his Bible, and witnesses. It's interesting that spiritual is at the very end. Okay. Even though it's at the end, it has it's very special meaning for us. Okay. If we, us as rangers, we need to be spiritual. Because if we're not spiritual, we just become another mentoring group. We just come, become like the Boy Scouts. But spiritual, we need to pray read our Bible at witness. So keep it up. Hey, we'll see you guys very soon. Enjoy the videos your commanders have uh, made for you guys. We'll talk to you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, boys, go ahead and stand up. Put your right hand over your heart, and we're going to say the pledge to the American flag. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all two next we're going to say the pledge to the christian flag put your right hand over your heart ready begin i pledge allegiance to the christian flag and to the savior for which kingdom it stands one brotherhood uniting all true christians in service and in love two put your right hand up and we're going to say the the pledge to the royal ranger flag ready begin with God's help, I will do my best to serve God, my church, and my fellow men, to live by the Ranger Code, to make the Golden Rule my daily rule. Two. Thank you, boys. You can have a seat now. 
How's it going, guys? Um, today we're going to be reading uh, Lesson 1 in the Book of Acts. And the title for this is going to be Baptism in the Holy Spirit. So let's, let's begin. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Verse 8. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. <clears throat> they saw what seemed to be tongues on fire that separated and came to the rest of to the rest on to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Acts chapter two verses one through four. There is a joke about a man who called technical support. His computer would not come on. The support person the support person had the man try different key commands. The support person had the man check out the cords that connect to the computer. The support person tried every chick he knew. Still, the man's computer wouldn't start up. Then, the support person asked if the power strip was working properly. All of a sudden, the computer owner... All of a sudden, the computer owner knew what was wrong. His computer was not plugged into the power strip. We use lots of things that need electrical power. Some of those things are cell phones, TVs, and gaming systems. It's frustrating to, to try to use a device that has dead batteries. As followers of Jesus, we are his friends. We get to tell others about him and his great love for us. We do that with our example and with our words. We live, we live, how, how we live sends a message to those around us. We need help to be able to tell others about, the, about God's love for them. God offers us as a gift to help us. That gift is baptism in the Holy Spirit. And everyone who believes in and follows Jesus can have it. The Holy Spirit helps us experience the full life Jesus offers. It also gives us the power to let others know about all God has done. It makes us strong enough to not do things we shouldn't do. It gives us power to do things we should do. We can pray and receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit at any time. When we receive the gift, it will come with a sign to let us know and everyone else around us know that we have been baptized. The signs the sign is speaking in other tongues. Um, once you guys complete this word search, you guys will be done with your week's lesson. And just turn them in or send a picture to Commander Frank and we'll, we'll be able to um, write you off. So let's end this in, in prayer, guys. Dear Father, I want to be filled with your spirit so, so that I can be your witness. Thank you for the gift of baptism in the Holy Spirit that you give that you give to us. I accept this gift from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bam! You guys still sitting around? Well, time to get up and start doing the Big Five Challenge. You guys already know what it consists of, but watch this for motivation. We got the first, second, and third place prizes. I've been informed that third place gets twenty-five dollars. Second place, fifty bucks, and for first place. $100. Like I said, this is a real challenge. So get out there, exercise, and get fit because we will be racing. Make it happen. Hi, my name is Luis Velasquez, and I'm the Eastern U.S. Hispanic representative for the Royal Rangers Ministry. Welcome to Remote Rangers. A Royal Ranger is spiritual. So today we're going to be talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the power and guidance we get through the Holy Spirit. Let me read to you from the Word, from Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where it says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Let me give you a scenario of what's going on here. You see, Jesus had come to this earth to show his love for all humanity. He was crucified. 
But in three days, he showed his power over death when he resurrected. After he resurrected, he spent 40 days speaking to his disciples. So one of the last things he told his disciples was that God was going to send them a gift. That gift was the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the power that comes with it. What power are we talking about? Well, just like the verse says, it's the power to become witnesses. It's the power to tell our friends and our families all about God. It's the power that gives us strength and it gives us courage and it gives us the ability to show God's love and to speak about Christ and his sacrifice for us. You have a purpose and you can fulfill that purpose with the help of the Holy Spirit. You have the power to make a difference. You know what? I have an idea. Why don't you guys come with me? Come on. So why are we here in front of a pool table? Well, I want to illustrate to you what the power of the Holy Spirit can do when you allow him in your life. Let's say this is you. You're here all alone. Over there is your family, your friends, your circle of influence. Well, in this case, your triangle of influence. This represents the Holy Spirit. And what the Holy Spirit wants to do, wants to put you in the right place so that you can make a difference in their lives when through the Holy Spirit, He empowers you. So let's say that's you. You don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. But here comes the Holy Spirit. And He lines you up perfectly so that you can make a difference. You see what happened there? You made an influence. You made a difference in the lives of all those people with the help of the Holy Spirit. What do you think? You want him to use you? You want him to empower you? You want him to guide you? So what do you think? Do you think you can make a difference in the lives of your family and friends? Let me tell you what happened when the disciples received the gift of the Holy Spirit that Jesus had promised. In Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4, it says, When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Can you imagine how they felt? Now they truly understood what the Holy Spirit was all about. What Jesus had told them was going to happen. After all of this happened, Peter, one of the disciples, he started preaching. And we can read his preaching in Acts chapter 2. And after he finishes speaking, verse 41 tells us what happened. Those who accepted his message were baptized. And about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Now that's power. Through the Holy Spirit, Peter was able to reach 3,000 people that day. But countless others throughout the course of his life. You know what? Let's go now to John chapter 16, verse 13. Jesus tells his disciples, But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you to all truth. Another characteristic of the Holy Spirit is that he can be our guide. I remember one day I went into the city, New York City, and I went in the subway, which is a train that travels on the ground. When I came out of the subway station, I looked around and I didn't know where to go. I didn't know where the building was. I didn't know which way to face. So I decided to use my GPS. You know the GPS that we have on our phones? So I put in the address, and sure enough, the GPS showed me where I was, showed me the building where I was supposed to go, and it showed me how to get there. And you know, the Holy Spirit works in the same way. It knows where we are, it knows where we need to go, and it also knows how to get there. And how do we know how to get there? When we read His Word. His Word has the instructions that we need. To get to the place where God wants us to be. Finally, 
I want to tell you about one more way that the Holy Spirit helps us. Specifically how he helps me. You see, I have a prayer list. And every time I pray, I take my prayer list with me. On it, I have my petitions. I have petitions of other people who have told me what their needs might be. And I present them before God. As I pray, I go down through the list. And when God answers the prayer, I highlight it. Because I want to praise Him for those things. But once I finish my list, I take a moment. And I ask the Holy Spirit. And I say, Holy Spirit, please bring to remembrance the things that I have forgotten that I need to pray for. And what I do is I take a moment. And I stay silent. And I wait for the Holy Spirit to speak to my heart. And sure enough, more times than not, sometimes something will come to my heart. Something that I forgot. Maybe it's a person that I forgot to pray for. Or a situation that I just learned about and I wasn't able to put it on my list. Sometimes the Holy Spirit puts in my heart some of the things that I might have done wrong. That I need for forgiveness for. Then I take a moment and I pray for those things. And there's so much that the Holy Spirit can help us with. Whether it's praying for others, speaking to others, and even understanding His Word. So we need to seek out the Holy Spirit. And He will help you become the godly man that He wants you to be. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thanking you for all the blessings you've given us. And thanking you, Lord, for the word that we have learned today. Holy Spirit, we come to you asking for your guidance, for your strength. That we may become the young men that you want us to become. That we may be filled with your spirit. So that we can do the things that you want us to do. In the name of Jesus, we place everything that we are and everything that we can be into your hands. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen and amen.